I feel like I have more in common with filmmakers than I do musicians. And I think that's important for any film composer to succeed. You have to be a filmmaker. You have to understand film. I'm composing music for the sole purpose of helping you tell the story that you're trying to tell. It really wasn't until 1990, a film called Edward Scissorhands. Some teenagers might turn to The Cure or Depeche Mode to kind of waller in their misery as being a teenager. I found the score to be of that same ilk, finding comfort in it, finding solace in it. And that's the film that I credit me wanting to become a film composer. It's like my love of music and my love of film intersected at that point. And this idea of like, wow, buying music from a film on a regular basis was starting to become this new novelty, this new kind of exciting thing. In 1993, I saw Jurassic Park and the sixth, seventh, eighth time that I went to the theater to see this movie, I brought a notebook and a pen light and I was feverishly taking notes trying to document as much of the score as I could. It wasn't just enough for me to like the music. I wanted to know more about how it worked, and it was my first real study of a film score. When I arrived in Austin, I was a little naive. I mean, here I was, I had just graduated from Berklee College of Music with a degree in film scoring and composition, and uh, it wasn't quite as automatic as I was expecting it to be. I had to do quite a bit of hustling. I had to send out about 10 to 15 demos a week, sometimes more, and it was a long time before I even got my first response. And the first paying gig I ever got as a professional was a short film called Twinkle Twinkle, by a Houston director named Bing Yao. I learned a really powerful, important lesson with this particular project. And I remember at the time, I got it and I sat down, day one, here I am. I'm gonna compose the score for my very first short film. And I sat down on day one and I sketched out ideas and I tried this and I tried that. And ended up just, everything I'd write, I would just throw it away. Nothing was good enough. And this happened for a whole day. And I would walk out and I would complain to my wife, like, I don't know what I'm doing. What did I get myself into? Second day rolls along and the same thing. I kept throwing away everything that I was writing. I was just very insecure and not happy with what I was doing. And every two hours or so, I would go out into the living room and just be complaining about it and be very insecure. And my wife just got fed up one day and she said, just go in there and do it. And I was like, yeah, but no, just go in there and I don't want you to come out until it's done. And I was kind of sullen and okay, and I walked back into my studio and I literally just did it. And the score was created basically right there on the spot. And to this day, I've never suffered from composer block. And I credit my wife for giving me the kick in the pants that I needed early in my career to get through those obstacles. I give my UT class a homework assignment and that's watch a movie. I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's a documentary or a B movie, just absorb film no matter how busy you are. I have had moments in my career where I'm three days away from deadline, I'm working 20 hours a day, I'm about to go crazy. I'll just stop, take two hours, and I'll go watch a movie. It recharges the batteries, gets my creative juices kind of flowing again, and when I come back, I can push the next 60 hours to deadline so much easier. So those are things that I think are really important. Throughout my career, I've had a thousand really wise reasons to quit trying to be a film composer. And nobody would begrudge me if I decided to pursue something where I could possibly be more successful. But I'm stubborn and I'm really passionate about what I'm doing. I have no fallback. There's nothing else that I can do or even want to do. And I believe that part of the success in anything that you want to do comes from knowing where you are, where you've been, and where you're going. And if you keep all three of those in focus and just stay determined, you'll find your way and be successful.